Hello, I'm Ralph. And I'm Dr. Jen. And in this show, we're going to answer one of the most exciting questions there is, and one with perhaps the most earth-shattering repercussions. Are we alone? Do little green men exist? And the answer to that question, if you've not got the time for a longer video and just want to grab the answer and go, is we don't know currently, but we should know whether there is life elsewhere in the galaxy in the next 10 years. We are right on the precipice of being able to detect alien life. Come on, tell me that's not an exciting prospect. If you want to know what we're looking for and how we're going to find it, stick around. Hey, you're still here. So, is this the greatest adventure in all of human history or what? I mean, imagine what it would mean for us if we were able to find alien life. Even microbial life that emerged independent of life on Earth would mean we're not special or unique. Life could flourish anywhere, anywhere that the conditions allow. And what would that mean for us philosophically or spiritually? If we find life more intelligent than us, or it finds us, that means our world changes immeasurably in an instant, one way or another. And humankind and science has never been so close to being able to find alien life as it is now. In fact, science has already told us how to find it. It's now for the engineers to build the equipment, the telescopes, the rovers and the rockets to go and do it. And they are right now as you watch. And the Americans and Europeans are leading this effort in very different ways. So the Europeans are building the most sophisticated and advanced telescope the world has ever seen, high up in the Chilean Atacama Desert, where the air is so thin that it's difficult to breathe, but then you're above most of the distorting effect of the atmosphere. And this extremely large telescope, imaginatively named the Extremely Large Telescope, is due to come online in 2027, when it'll start looking for the telltale signs of life in distant planet atmospheres. And once operational, this telescope will turn its attention to faraway exoplanets that we've already detected and actually peer into their atmospheres to examine the composition of gases for ones that can only have come from life that exists on that planet. You can see how we've detected candidate exoplanets and just how many there are by clicking on the link above. Just imagine how impossibly difficult it would be to figure out the composition of that thin slither of air around a tiny dot that's literally trillions of miles away. But in about five years time, that's exactly what we'll be able to do with this telescope. And science has already told us which gases we should be looking out for. So gases which are associated with metabolic processes to do with life. So some great examples are oxygen and methane. So these gases are really easily broken down by starlight. So if we find them in a planet's atmosphere, that tells us that something has to be continually replenishing these gases in the atmosphere in order for us to detect them. And so that's a great indication of possible life. Other compounds like methanol, acetone and isoprene, these are all released by living organisms into the atmosphere. So if we found any of those, then that would be a giant X marks the spot for further investigation. And it really could be signs that this planet is teeming with life and that we're not alone in this universe of ours. The Americans are doing something similar, but with a space-based telescope, what's often called the successor to the aging Hubble Space Telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope. This is now launched and is going through checks before the real science gets underway in 2022. But like Europe's ground-based extremely large telescope, this will also peer into the atmospheres of distant exoplanets that previous telescopes have suggested may be rocky and habitable. But again, with the phenomenal capabilities of this telescope, it will be able to detect those telltale gases and compounds. Of course, for both telescopes, the real smoking gun would be compounds in atmospheres that are only produced by intelligent life in an industrial stage of their evolution, like we are now. In a few years, we may know, as there are dozens of faraway planets to examine, with more being found all the time. 
Then there's the search for life in our solar system with spacecraft that can get up close or even land on the planets and moons that have promising conditions. Saturn's moon Enceladus and Jupiter's moon Europa are two of the places that show the most promise. Both are worlds with liquid oceans under their surface ice. Both have cracks in those thick ice sheets that send geysers of water shooting out into space, which luckily our telescopes and spacecraft have been able to examine. And they show organic material in the water. Not life exactly, but rich minerals and nutrients that would nourish sea life. If there are thermal vents on their seabeds, like the regions where we think the first life on Earth may have emerged, those moons could also be teeming with life, but close enough that we could explore them with robots or human explorers, if we're comfortable contaminating that world with our own organic pollutants. And as luck would have it, there are missions to look for habitability on these moons too. There are a number of proposed robotic missions to Enceladus from NASA and the European Space Agency, none of which have been given the green light just yet, but the European Space Agency are launching a mission to fly by Europa in 2023, and NASA's Europa Clipper will launch in 2024 to search for signs of life in Europa's water geysers. Landers and drills to explore the icy surface or the oceans underneath the ice are always being considered by NASA too. But of course, the nearest and most alluring place to look for life in the solar system is Mars. In the late 1800s, famous American astronomer Percival Lowell had a look at Mars using the telescope he'd constructed in flagship Arizona. And this is the same observatory that much later in 1930, Clyde Tombaugh used to discover Pluto. And when he was looking at Mars, Percival Lowell saw features which he thought were canals. Letting his imagination run wild, he declared an advanced but desperate culture had built the canals to tap Mars's polar ice caps, the last source of water on an inexorably drying planet. When I was at the Lowell Observatory in 2008, I saw Mars through that telescope and struggled to see anything more than a small reddish dot. Undoubtedly a bad time of year to observe it, but I can understand how Lowell's imagination could run so wild with such a poor view of the planet and the rise of the science fiction genre with H.G. Wells telling stories of Martian invaders in his War of the Worlds. But if I was a cynical man, I'd say what better way to gain notoriety than finding hints of an ancient civilization on another planet. But we've been fascinated with the possibility of life on Mars ever since, and it wasn't until the Mariner 4 spacecraft flew past the Red Planet in 1965, taking incredibly grainy images, that we saw for certain that there is no advanced life and no evidence of past archaeology or engineering on the surface. But what about primitive life that never had the chance to evolve into advanced life before Mars became too dry? NASA's next big adventure was to get there and search for microbial life. Viking 1 and Viking 2 were the first spacecraft to land on Mars. They collected samples of the Martian soil, injected them with nutrients and watched to see if the soil gave off gases that would mean there were Martian microbes in hibernation being brought back to life and starting to metabolise once again. And you know what? It did. And that got scientists excited that we'd found life. But only one of the two Viking spacecraft got that result. Which means even 45 years on, we still don't know if that was a real detection or not. And that's a great mystery to have. Recent studies of Mars's atmosphere suggest it once had oceans covering a third of its surface. The Mars Curiosity rover showed that the conditions for life also existed on Mars with drinkable water on the surface for at least a few hundred million years. So over the next couple of decades, NASA and the European Space Agency are going to lead the search for life in the soil of Mars. ESA's Rosalind Franklin rover will launch in 2022 and land, hopefully, in 2023. It will then spend seven months drilling up to two metres into the ground to draw out samples beneath the surface where the sun's radiation hasn't been able to reach and sterilise any dormant microbes that might be lying there. These core samples will be placed into an organic molecule analyzer instrument to look for those frozen and dried out microbes in a modern day rerun of the Viking experiment in 1976. Now over at NASA, they're doing something very interesting. They have the Perseverance rover on Mars, which is investigating a crater that used to be a river delta. 
So this rover is looking at the most interesting parts of this old river delta where there could have been clays and minerals that may have once supported life. The rover's drilling in, it's collecting samples, analysing them on board, and then the most interesting ones that may have signs of organics, they're stored in little metal tubes and then deposited behind the rover as it moves on to its next target. At some point in the near future, a mission will go to collect these samples and return them back to Earth for humans to examine them for life with all the equipment we have back here in our laboratories. If they do contain ancient life, oh, we'll know. While the return phase of the mission is still quite a few years away, NASA are already testing the technologies needed to return those samples back to Earth. So the sample return mission, combined with ESA's Rosalind Franklin rover, really does give us the opportunity to, within the next decade, tell us whether life was ever flourishing on Mars while it was habitable. Of course, the wild card in all of this is SpaceX's giant interplanetary rocket prototyping facility in Boca Chica, Texas. As you can see in the video here, Elon Musk is hell-bent on sending his developmental Starship rockets to Mars as soon as possible. And as soon as this rocket is proven, perhaps in the next few years, he'll start sending them to Mars during every Mars launch window. It's a long road of prototyping with a lot of development still needed, but these Starships are big enough to send tons of equipment to start colonising Mars, and of course, Musk's grand plan, they're big enough to send hundreds of volunteers willing to make humanity multi-planetary, assuming there aren't too many mishaps along the way. So, will Starship become a reality? Will it allow us to collect samples or examine the Martian soil in person before the Mars sample return mission actually returns some Martian soil? Your thoughts are important to us, so please let us know in the comments below. And finally, we have the search for alien signals, which is more of a lottery, but if detected, tells us for certain we've found not only life, but intelligent life. Even Victorian luminaries like Lord Kelvin and Nikolai Tesla have suggested radio for communications with Martians. Remember Percival Lowell's crazy idea about Martian canals on Mars? It certainly wasn't seen as crazy back then, and Guillermo Marconi, the Nobel Prize winning inventor of wireless telegraph, and Tesla both claimed to have intercepted Martian radio signals. So this, naturally, spurred genuine scientific endeavour to listen for alien signals throughout the 20th and into this century. The US Navy, NASA and more lately Stephen Hawking have all had a go at searching for this most monumental needle in a proverbial haystack. Perhaps the ultimate expression of a low-likelihood, high-reward endeavour. But the most famous and familiar of these today is the SETI Institute, who have a bank of radio telescopes to turn on any signal from the cosmos that astronomers can't explain, just in case it is an intelligent signal from aliens. And we do get unexplained signals from space. Jets of energy from massive objects often reach us as radio bursts, and eh, we usually find they were caused by known phenomena. A famous signal that SETI detected in 1977 had them so perplexed and excited that they wrote WOW next to the signal data, and it became known as the WOW signal. To this day, it's still the strongest candidate for an alien radio transmission ever detected. But even SETI astronomer Seth Shostak told us in an interview that they still have no idea what it was, but perhaps disappointingly, terrestrial interference seems most likely. But now astronomers are not only looking for radio bursts, but microwave and laser emissions that may be shot out in every direction from other worlds in an attempt to reach out to other advanced civilizations. In a few years, maybe even just a few months, we'll be able to tell if there are chemical pollutants from an industrial civilization in the atmospheres of exoplanets. But could we one day be able to detect light sources or quantum communications from towns and cities on faraway worlds? In theory, yes, when our sensors and detectors get sensitive enough, which is only a matter of time. The real question is, will our telescopes and rovers find alien life before our detectors hear a radio signal from them? Or maybe there is nobody there. OK, one more wild card, and one that doesn't require us to do anything at all. Perhaps just as likely as us finding a signal from another civilization, 
is another civilization just rocking up to say hello and punish us for being such rotters to one another. Or to welcome us into the Technological Civilization Club with a whole heap of great technological insights and knowledge. Wouldn't that be nice? But you can see more about how we discover other worlds so impossibly far away here and the weird and wonderful worlds we've already found here. But let us know what you think about the search for alien life. Is it worthwhile? Would it change the course of humanity forever? Is it dangerous? Your thoughts are as good as ours, so let us see them in the comments below.